This is QTV News and I am Jenna Basonko. First, the headlines. The Attorney General and Minister of Justice on Monday presented the bill on a new constitution to the National Assembly for a first reading. A group of journalists have claimed discrimination after they were denied access to the parliamentary chamber during the presentation of the Constitution Bill and order proceedings. September is Sickle Cell Awareness Month, which gives an opportunity to acknowledge and remember those who suffer from sickle cell disease. We will hear from the president of the Gambia Sickle Cell Association. Officials of the National Drug Law Enforcement Agency have arrested four suspected drug traffickers with bundles of cannabis and cocaine. In international news, the EU-China summit has been held via video conference today after having been postponed from June due to the coronavirus. Those were the main headlines and now the news in detail. Do stay with us. Thank you for joining us in local news. The Attorney General and Minister of Justice on Monday presented the Constitution of the Republic of the Gambia Promulgation Bill 2020 for a first reading. If passed by the Parliament, the draft constitution will be sent to the IEC for a referendum. Alusisa was at the Parliament and he files in this report. The third ordinary session of the National Assembly commenced on Monday morning as lawmakers resume business after a month recess. At the start of the session, the Attorney General and Justice Minister Dauda A. Jalo handed a copy of the Constitution of the Republic of the Gambia Bill 2020 to the clerk of the National Assembly, Modu A. Sisi. The Minister will return to the Parliament on Wednesday, where he will share with deputies the general merits and principles of the bill during the second reading. This will be followed by a debate on the general merits and principles of the bill by lawmakers. After this, a member shall move a motion for the bill to be referred to a particular standing committee of the parliament or to be committed to the whole house. This bill is quite very important for the country because it will determine how the country shall be governed. From here, if passed, it will clear the IEC to conduct a referendum for Gambians to vote yes or no as to whether they want to maintain the current constitution or adopt a new one. In 2018, deputies enacted the act that established the CRC, which was mandated, among other things, to draft a new constitution for the country. In welcoming members back to parliament, Speaker Mariam Jack Denton expresses gratitude to the lawmakers and the office of the clerk for the commitment in discharging their duties. And she has this piece of advice for the members in relation to dealing with the bill before them. The CRC finally compiled one of the most important documents that contain the wishes aspirations and the modus operandi as to how the people of the Gambia want to be governed. As representatives of the people, I urge all of us to treat this document judiciously and objectively without fear or favor, affection or ill will. The draft constitution among other new elements provides for a two-term limit and declaration of assets by an elected president and source of funding by political parties. Meanwhile, the President of the Republic, Adam Abaro, will on Thursday deliver the State of the Nation address at the National Assembly. The Parliament says access to the event is restricted to invitees. Reporting for QTV News, I am Aliou Sise. Aliou Sise there at the National Assembly. Now, a group of journalists have claimed discrimination after they were denied access to the parliamentary chamber to cover proceedings on Monday when Parliament commenced its third ordinary session. Aliou Sise again. This journalist arrived at the Parliament to cover the proceedings which has consideration of the Constitution Bill at the top of its agenda. Journalists Keksane, Aramata Jata and Ismail Sonko are among the few that have been keenly covering the parliamentary sessions during the first and second ordinary sessions. They expressed disappointment at the decision to limit the number of media houses allowed access when parliament is considered in such an important national document. They claim it is a case of discrimination. It is discriminated and it is against the very uh, freedom of uh, press and the freedom of information in this country and it's even against the constitution of this country because the constitution doesn't discriminate its citizens. So it is disappointment. Since the COVID started in the Gambia's March, I was covering the city, but up to today, 14th of September, I came from home and when access to the National Assembly, they said you are not allowed to enter. I say why? They said they are only three media outlets to cover citizens for this. I say why they say that because of COVID-19. I say no, it means that Gambia have COVID-19 yesterday. Are you not in today? Because I have not been allowed to go in, it is rather unfortunate that it's only QTV, GRTS and I Africa that are allowed to go and cover the sessions. 
It is unfortunate. It is discriminatory. It is unacceptable. Khalifa Sal of Serekunda suggested that the decision be reviewed and the speaker promised to engage the office of the clerk. So, Honorable Speaker, I want to make a motion that the decision that has been made to be annulled and another decision be made by you right away to allow those media houses outside the gates to come in and we place them wherever they should in order to be able to observe the distancing that is necessary. If we fail to do that, Honorable Speaker, the integrity of this National Assembly will be questioned. Honor, honor, honorable, um, honorable Member, with all due respect, I have taken your observation, but I don't think it is fair to force me to take a decision immediately. Immediately. I cannot accede to that request. It's something that we will take note of, and I will con we'll consult with the office of the clerk, but I don't think anybody is stopping them from taking the feed from wherever. I am not a technician, but the essential thing is I cannot make a decision as requested immediately after you have thought of it, and I did not think of it. So I think it's only fair for me to take it into consideration, and we will take note and see how best we can work out. Thank you. The Speaker of the Parliament says the decision was done in good faith and consent, but not intended to deliberately restrict the media or public from attending the proceedings. But for some of these journalists, they have been covering the proceedings despite the COVID-19. I have only acted in good faith and conscience to invoke Section 98, Subsection 2 of the 1997 Constitution and Clause 11, Subclause 4 of the standing orders of the National Assembly to restrict the admission of strangers into the public gallery in line with the general public gathering regulations amid COVID-19. It is hoped that the issue will be addressed by the next session on Wednesday, bearing in mind the importance of ensuring the health and safety of everyone. Reporting for QTV News, I am Alou Sise. September is Sickle Cell Awareness Month, which gives an opportunity to acknowledge and remember those who suffer from sickle cell disease and raise awareness of the need for research and treatment of sickle cell disease. In this report, the president of the Gambia Sickle Cell Association says that the government needs to provide more support for them. Sickle cell disease is a group of blood disorders typically inherited from a person's parents. The most common type is known as sickle cell anemia. It results in an abnormality in the oxygen-carrying protein hemoglobin found in the red blood cells. This leads to a rigid, sequel-like shape under certain circumstances. September as Sequel Cell Awareness Month encourages individuals and organizations to join efforts and bring attention to sequel cell disease by engaging elected officials for proclamations, hosting awareness events, distributing educational information, and to dispel the myths about sequel cell disease. We engage Dr. Sahna on how sickle cell can be prevented. One of the things that you do is that it's not a common thing that is done in Gambia, but it should be something that people should start doing now, is to be able to do your lab tests before marriage. So one of those things is to do a genotyping for sickling to identify where you fall in, to be able to know what to do. And then there are other tests that, that are advisable, tests like HIV, AIDS, tests like STIs and the like. But the most important thing for sickle cell is to do a genotyping before getting married. The Gambia effectively joined the fight against sickle cell when two students from the University of the Gambia, Andrew Sambo and J. Mbuch, formed the Gambia Sickle Cell Association in 2016, which serves as a safe space for sickle cell patients. As the world is battling the coronavirus pandemic, this has affected sickle cell awareness activities. The president of the Gambia Sickle Cell Association spoke to us about how the pandemic has affected their work. Well, it has affected us uh, in so many ways, especially in uh, terms of uh, bringing uh, patients together. Because actually, as an association, we started what we call the Family Outing Day. And this program has brought so many confidence in sickle cell patients because with this, we gather sickle cell patients together in one uh, area so that we see it, we exchange experience, and then we give them courage. We show them um, evidence of people that are having sickle cell and are doing well in the society. So this thing was very helpful. And then because of the pandemic, we can't have it again because we used to have it every three months. And due to the uh, uh, pandemic, we can't do it again. 
But uh, right now, as far as technology is here, we are trying to use our platform, the, that is the Facebook and the WhatsApp page. We're doing the communication. And uh, it's not that very much um, 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 effective as uh, what we used to do. The president of the Sickle Cell Association says the government should do more. As an association and with the number of sickle cell patients in the Gambia, it will, it's always difficult to deal with these people without having finance because this is very important. Uh, we feel that we've been left out in society, we've been left out by the government because there are no policies put in place to protect these uh, sickle cell patients. Some of the time we come across cases where sickle cell patients will be working in an institution because of their crisis and the way they live, sometimes they won't understand uh, why they do this. Sometimes they will feel like they don't want to come to work, they're just running away, and then at the end of the day, they will be sacked. Tips for existing sequel cell patients include regular exercise, frequent rehydration, avoid infections, and most importantly, dealing with the pain sequel cell comes with to live a normal life. Reporting for QTV News, I am Jenna Masonko. Sequel cell disease matters. Now, officials of the National Drug Law Enforcement Agency last week arrested four suspected drug traffickers with five bundles of cannabis and a block of cocaine. Two of the suspects are Bissau Guineans, and Sumane Sunyasi has arrested that. An allegedly notorious drug dealer is allegedly the owner of this vehicle used by two of the suspects, one of whom is a minor, a former official of the defunct National Intelligence Agency. Today, who has been arrested multiple times on drug-related matters, was recently released on bail. In 2018, he was arrested with the same vehicle, an old Pajero with tinted glass and no number plates. The two suspects, who were carrying five bundles of cannabis, are currently in custody helping law enforcement officers in their investigations. Lamin K. Jobate, Drug Demand Reduction Officer and the Deputy Public Relations Officer of the National Drug Law Enforcement Agency says the two were arrested following a tip-off. They are arrested at Wulinkama on the 11th um, September 2020. They were arrested with um, five big bundles of suspected cannabis. Um, this case, there's something interesting about this particular case because the vehicle in which these drugs were concealed in this vehicle belonged to one of the notorious traffickers in this country who was arrested sometime in 2018 with 160 big bundles. That case was taken to court and the accused was acquitted and discharged. In another development, Jobate says two other Bissau Guinean suspects in possession of one block of cocaine were intercepted and arrested by drug law enforcement officers at the Jibora border post. When these two people were nabbed at the Jibora border post, the officers approached them and then screened them. Then after the screening, they were found with one bar of suspected cocaine. Then they, they were arrested on the spot. So um, investigation into the issue is also ongoing. The drug has been tested and confirmed um, to be cocaine. As the fight against drug trafficking and other organized crime intensifies, officials of the NDLEA warn members of the public against the use and trafficking of drugs. Antoine is Nyasi for QTV News. We will go for a short commercial break and when we come back, the news continues with some more local news stories. Do stay tuned. break if we're just tuning in this is QTV news now half a million dollars is worth of solar batteries and accessories has been recently installed at Baja Kunda Health Center in URR sponsored by a community-based organization called Sutra Kafo Alaji A. Jalo reports the community-based organization Sutra Kafo was formed by the residents of Baja Kunda and those in the diaspora the 24 new heavy-duty solar batteries and accessories were installed after the life cycle of the old batteries ran out, causing power shortages at the health facility. Over the past uh, months, uh, we are battling electricity or power deficiency in the health facility. And this facility has a uh, catchment area population of 28,596. Like in, in trying to meet this, the demand of the number of patients coming for services, we, we need to have enough uh, energy to do certain services like the OPD services, 
accident emergency services, uh, maternal and newborn care services, and other emergency services. So, our averagely we have 100 deliveries, deliveries per month. Every month we have a number of 100 women delivering the health facility. Without uh, sufficient energy, we cannot do, do our work efficiently. So that was the need that we see that uh, we need to empower the solar uh, project that we have here. And we, we call on the community and they answer to our call and they purchase uh, batteries, uh, 24 batteries worth uh, $450,000. Uh, dollars. That's what we are launching at, at the moment. A representative of Sutura Kafu, Abu Jawara, explains that the health facility was built by the community and its operation is their utmost priority. This hospital belongs to both the Gambia and Senegal. We have been experiencing electricity problems. There are some illnesses. So far, if there is no electricity in the health facility, it is very, very bad. Since the information was related to our organization, we have to mobilize resources with the support of our diaspora chapter to help fix the electricity nightmare. We also want to appeal to government to send in the required personnel in order to reduce the referral rates to Basse. The newly appointed deputy governor of URL, Esa Conte, highlighted the significance of giving back to the community, stating that collaborative efforts are needed for sustainable development. Uh, this is a very important uh, event, and uh, the Kesto is a very laudable one. An effort to complement uh, the effort of the government, uh, as you know, in the national development agenda, uh, the health center is number one priority of the president and then uh, the government also cannot do it all by itself even if they can uh, it cannot be on uh, the same time uh, so for the community coming together and complementing the effort of the government uh, is very welcoming and is very important with the country experiencing blackouts due to frequent power outage, an initiative such as this is another way of complementing government efforts to help develop our communities. Reporting for QTV News, I am Alaji F. Jalo. Following government's decision that all markets should close on Sundays for fumigation, market vendors in Janjambure have complained that no fumigation has taken place in Janjambure. Loli M. Kamara has the rest of that. The market vendors say they have fully complied with government's directive to operate from 6 a.m. to 2 p.m., even though it is not favorable to them. They complain that Sundays are the most boring days and they are losing income staying at home while no fumigation has taken place at their market, even though this is one of the reasons for Sunday closures. Fatou Keta, a vendor, she has a frustration, saying she took a loan from a microfinance bureau to operate her business, and she is now struggling to pay back. I plead with the authorities to help us with funds, just as they are helping the women in the combos. This is our only source of income. What I don't understand is that they said we should open at 6 a.m. and close by 2 p.m. We always do that, but they never fumigate the market. Nyemajara, also a vendor, says it is difficult for them to do any meaningful business between the hours allowed by the government. The market opening and closing regulations added more challenges to our business. As you can see, things are slow. It's just that we don't want to sit at home and do nothing because we have families to look after. I appeal to the authorities to allow us to do our business as before. The World Health Organization issued what it calls an adaptable approach towards easing COVID-19 restrictions. The Gambia government has been gradually easing the restrictions, but with a spike in cases in the country, would it be wise to allow all markets to operate normal hours, including on Sundays? For QTV News, Loli M. Kamara. We will take another short commercial break, and when we come back, we will take a look at international and sports news. Do stay tuned.
welcome back from that short commercial break. If you're just tuning in, this is QTV News in international news. <music> The EU-China summit has been held via video conference today after having been postponed from June 22nd due to the coronavirus pandemic. Maria Mafal has the rest of that. As the relationships between the United States and China, on the one hand, worsens with a trade war, the European Union and China, on the other hand, appear to be heading in the opposite direction. The annual summit was cancelled by the German government due to the coronavirus and is being held virtually and shortened to a day instead of three. Angela Merkel, playing host, European Council's President Charles Michel and European Commission President Ursula von der Leyen joined for Monday's video conference with Xi, Chinese President. EU leaders expressed concerns at steps taken by China to impose national security legislation in Hong Kong, as well as on a deteriorating human rights situation, including the treatment of minorities in Xinjiang and Tibet and of human rights defenders as well as restrictions on fundamental freedoms. The EU-China Comprehensive Agreement on Investment, CAI, was supposed to be a step towards establishing a level playing field in trade between the two. Negotiations on the deal have been ongoing for six years. Its aim is for more market access and fair competition, reducing the role of state-owned companies and achieving sustainability. Additionally, Relationships between the EU and China have been less than ideal based on what many EU countries feel was initial poor handling of the coronavirus pandemic. What is likely make the talks awkward is that the EU sees China's autocratic style of governance as being at odds with EU-style democracy. This was summed up in the previous summit by EU President Charles Michel who said, China is both an opportunity and necessity. But at the same time, we have to recognize that we do not share the same values, political system or approach to multilateralism. He further disclosed expectations that human rights dialogue will take place in post-COVID-19 era. Analysts wait to see what practical things come out of the summit as both sides need each other, economically and strategically. For QTV News, I am Mariano Fad. Maria Mafal there on the EU-China summit. Now on to sports news. I am joined by my colleague Momodo Gajaga. So Momodo Gajaga, talk to us about what is going on in the world of sports. Thank you very much, Jennifer. Um, as you would know, the race for the Africa Cup of Nations qualifiers resumption is on the way and teams are getting prepared. Next month, October, there will be a series of international friendlies. Nigeria, Senegal, Morocco, you name them. And the Gambia is also in the offing to play a series of test matches. But before that, your players have to be in shape. And one player who has really been in shape before the start of the season in Switzerland is Asen Sise. Yesterday in their match against Chisau, he scored two goals. But guess what happened? He ended up on the losing side. And now let's hear from Asen Sise himself. And, uh, I hope to continue like this because although it's, it's a cup game, but as a striker to score your first game in the league is a big boost, is a big motivation and scoring two goals too. It's important for me. So, but the disappointing thing is that we lost the game, and uh, and it was a shock defeat that a second division team take us out in the cup. So, there you go. That's Asen Sise there, um, showing his disappointment, even though he scored two of the goals. And we want Asen Sise to be continuing scoring the goals so that he would be in shape whenever the Gambia is playing against Gabon in the qualifiers of the 2022 Africa Cup of Nations. And that is going to be in November. Gambia will play twice against Gabon. First is away in Gabon and the return leg in the Gambia. So we want yeah. all our players to be I in I think shape. it's, although he's on the um, losing side, I think it's still good because we can use him to determine that he's on the good side when it comes to the friendly game that we are about to have. So Momotu Gajak, it's been a while since we had this session on the news. So I just want to ask you how you think the pandemic is really affecting football because we are about to have a friendly match with Gabon. Well, the match against Gabon obviously is a competitive match, not friendly. Um, it's the qualifiers of the Africa Cup of Nations for Cameroon 2022. Obviously, yes, the pandemic has affected global sports, um, name it football, athletics, um, volleyball, 
you know, basketball, all sort of sports because of the shutdown, the lockdown, name it, in Europe and other parts of the world. In the Gambia, there have been restrictions. Until now, the league has not resumed. Um, the league is expected to start again. That's the new season in December. So it has seriously hampered the proceedings of sports. Okay, thank you so much, Momodo Gajaka, for that. Now, before we end this news bulletin, let's take a quick look at our main stories. The Attorney General and Minister of Justice on Monday presented the bill on a new constitution to the National Assembly for a first reading. A group of journalists have claimed discrimination after they were denied access to the parliamentary proceedings. September is Sequel Cell Awareness Month, which gives an opportunity to acknowledge and remember those who suffer from sequel cell disease. We heard from the president of the Gambia Sequel Cell Association. Officials of the National Drug Law Enforcement Agency have arrested four suspected drug traffickers with bundles of cannabis and cocaine. In international news, the EU-China summit took place via video conference today after having been postponed from June 22nd due to the coronavirus. Well, that is all we have for you in this edition of QTV News. Join us tomorrow, same time for more news. Thanks for watching and do stay safe.